So in this tutorial, we're going to focus on the different reactor blocks within Pro2 and how they can help us solve the ammonia synthesis reaction. Nitrogen plus hydrogen yields uh, ammonia. So bring up Pro2. Now for those of you who don't remember, um, if anything is outlined in red, of course, um, that needs to be filled out or at least addressed. Uh, if it's green, um, you, know, uh, you can overwrite it if you want to, you don't need to. If it's blue, it means you put in everything that you need. And if it's yellow, then you have overdefined the problem. And it most likely will not solve, or at least you'll get errors. So we want to bring up a new simulation. And right off, we can see we need component selection and thermal. Um, let's check the units of measure. Just keep them as is uh, for now. So, we want to add hydrogen, Oops. add hydrogen, nitrogen, and ammonia. Now, uh, based on uh, the thermal package that we need, um, we can most likely use one of these uh, first two. Um, if you look back at the chemical engineering progress, article, um, we can see that uh, Peng Robinson or SRK will be appropriate uh, for our component list. So let's use SRK. And I'm going to use a splitter so that I don't have to put in all of the uh, streams because I'm going to put in all of the reactors at once. We can see how they solve uh, side by side. So if I click on the reactors, we add our equilibrium, CSTR, Gibbs, conversion, PFR. I'm going to quickly rename these to help us out later when we look at all of the data. So this warning uh, tells us that we have to have reaction data, um, and that will be this reaction set name, but we'll get to that in a second. Need it for PFR as well, so um, now we can add in our streams. Some process simulators have this kind of splitter method, uh, which is how you're forced to do it. Some have a duplicator, uh, which is basically it looks like a splitter, but it duplicates the flow. So if you have 50 pound moles coming in here, each of these will be 50 pound moles, and it will just duplicate the stream. Um, this, or Pro2, doesn't do that. Uh, so we're just going to use the splitter, and in stream 1, we're going to specify uh, 100 pound moles per hour. Now, based on our stoichiometry, we have 1 mole of nitrogen, 3 moles of hydrogen, so our ratio will be 0.75 to 0.25, and just for the sake of completeness, we'll put in 0 for... Um, NH3, and then it drops it out anyway. So here we want our temperature coming in about 450, and this is kind of just specified in the process uh, overall. Uh, our pressure coming in at 100 bar or 1,470 uh, psi. Now for the splitter, another reason I want to do this is to show you how to set up a splitter. So our first parameter stream S2, so the top one going into the equilibrium reactor. Um, we want to specify a flow rate for all components of 20 pound moles. <clears throat> We're going to do the same thing for S3. Uh, same thing for S4.
you know, we're selecting all components because the entire stream should be at that flow. I don't have to specify the last one quite yet because it should default to uh, the right value. I try to click on it, but I can't. So it recognizes that we have 100 pound moles going in through the into the splitter, and then we're going to have 20 pound moles coming out in each of five streams. So it just solves for you. Now connecting our outlet streams. Now I'm going to rename these as well because, again, it will help with our uh, analysis on the outlet or when we compare the difference between all of them. Actually, let's move. Let's move this. Oops. Over here. So now we can actually just right away put in these uh, stream tables. So we want this top one to be all of our outlet streams. we want to look at the material balance list. So for all NA, because nothing is solved yet. Um, just as a double check, I'm going to add in a one really quick that looks at all of the other streams. So our main one coming into the splitter, and then all five leaving, just to make sure that we are in fact feeding everything that we think we're feeding to individual reactors. And again, the splitter is just a shortcut way um, to, uh, to divide um, and not have to duplicate all of these streams. So we can see that all our reactors are red, so we have to put in um, some specifications. So here we, see we have a red reaction set name. Now shift and methanation are built into uh, Pro2. But we don't want those, we want our synthesis reactions, our ammonia synthesis. So if we come over here to input, we can see the reaction data is red. So we need to specify a reaction. We're going to call it AMM for ammonia and enter data. Now we're going to stick to a power law method. That's what um, most, ev uh, all of them are um, uh, associated with. Uh, it's your rate, rate constant times your concentrations. So you I'm just going to stick with ammonia. Now here are coefficients. Come back and see coefficient of 1 for nitrogen, coefficient of 3 for hydrogen. So 3 hydrogens, 1, oops, 1 nitrogen, and on the outlet we have 2 uh, ammonia. Now here we can see that our stoichiometric balance is equal to within 0.1% of uh, the tolerances that are specified. That's all the data we need for here. Click OK. Now over here, this H, you can see in the data legend, is the heat of reaction. So if we have the heat of reaction, we can specify it. We don't need it right now, so we're not going to specify it. Now if we have any equilibrium data, we can specify that as well. And if we have any kinetic data, we can specify that. Now that's the pre-exponential factor and the activation energy and temperature dependence. We actually have those, we found those in the literature. This next slide. So our ammonia synthesis reaction, our rate constant from the literature is here. So we're just going to put this in right now so it's a global variable. So if we add this, um, if we add this reaction data to any of these reactors, uh, it will just add in right away. So if we look at our power law model, um, our pre-exponential factor is 1.7698 times 10 to the 15th. So 1.7698. 
Now if we put in a little e to the 15, that's times 10 to the 15. Our activation energy you can see is uh, 40.765 kilocalories per mole. I definitely sp pay special attention to the units. So 40.765. It's double checking. Now again, you can go up to units of measure and change that to kilocalories per mole. Be careful that it, this is by default per gram mole and not uh, kilogram. So, um, and we have no temperature dependence uh, in our uh, power law. So, T to the zero power, all of this just goes to one. And um, that's our uh, kinetic data. Now we also have equilibrium data. Now this is also from the literature. So again, um, our rate constant, small k, equilibrium expression, big K. Our products over reactants, um, the equilibrium of ammonia uh, to the reactants, nitrogen and hydrogen. Now in Pro2, if we click on equilibrium data, we can see a lot of coefficients here. We do not need all of those. In fact, you only need one. Um, we happen to have a temperature dependence uh, for our equilibrium. Um, you can see here. So we're just going to put in these two coefficients. Uh, so negative 32.975. And you can see here, so that's A. Now we need B. 22930. And that's going to do it for our equilibrium uh, data. Okay. So we have our reaction data set now, but we still need uh, some data in order to run. So we're going to now go back to our equilibrium reactor, specify working with our ammonia reactions, and we have a fixed temperature in the reactor of about 570 Fahrenheit. So we're good to go in equilibrium. Let's check out CSTR. We want to make our fixed temperature in all of these 570, just so we can compare the outlets uh, in a minute. So we specify our ammonia reaction set, and each of these reactors will either use our kinetic power law model or the equilibrium, um, or just the reactants themselves, and to, to minimize Gibbs energy. So here uh, we need our reactor data. Now our reactor volume. Um, a little bit of design work is necessary in order to, to provide a proper reactor volume, um, but we're just going to see what 100 cubic feet will do for now. And we can always go back and change it, tweak it. Uh, we're just looking at the, the kinetic dependence or the, or the yields of ammonia. So our Gibbs was actually already set because we had specified um, uh, our reactants um, and products. We could specify the ammonia reaction. We're not going to right now. Just the temperature, 570 Fahrenheit inside the reactor. Look at our conversion reactor. Fixed temperature, 570 Fahrenheit. Reaction set, ammonia. Don't need any other input here. And our PFR, get fixed temperature, 570 Fahrenheit with the ammonia reaction set. Now we do need reactor data for this. Now, for uh, comparison's sake, if we specified 100 cubic feet for our CSTR, we want to also just specify 100 cubic feet for PFR, uh, just to keep things uh, constant right now. So our length, say it's 100. Now if we have a tube inside diameter, or an ID of 13.5 inches, that will give us a total reactor volume of 100 cubic feet. So we don't have any more red, we're all ready to go. Now a warning pops up, it says the CSTR and the PFR do not support feeds with solid components. That's fine, we don't have solid components, so ignore that and just run simulation. So it ran, and our top stream table here, we can see our molar flow rates of ammonia in the conversion reactor, we get about 11.1%, um, um, or 11, or 0.11 uh, 
pound moles per hour. Uh, we don't get anything apparently in our CSTR. We barely get anything in our equilibrium reactor. Our Gibbs, again, Gibbs is the maximum kind of theoretical uh, yield that you can get uh, based on the minimization of Gibbs free energy. See our PFR, also get nothing. Now, our PFR and our CSTR were the only two ones where we had to, had to define our reactor volumes, and that could be an issue. So let's go back right now, really quick, and change those just to see if we can get a better yield since we guessed in the first place. So let's just increase it by one order of magnitude, say 1,000 cubic feet. And all of these, we have a pressure drop of zero. That's actually by default. You can see, let's go PFR. So pressure drop is all zero. So we haven't um, specified anything about pressure other than the inlet. So we run it again with our larger volumes, same warnings, ignore those for now. And we can see that we do not change, uh, we, we still don't get any reaction in our CSTR PFR. Um, but uh, we do get a little bit with Gibbs. So actually if we go back to Gibbs, we specify the ammonia reaction, whereas before we just let everything minimize. Now, it still doesn't matter. We still get uh, 0.55 pound moles per hour on the back end. And this is a double check down here. Stream S1 is our total inlet flow. It's still specified at 100 pound moles per hour. And every stream feeding into a reactor here you can see is 20 pound moles per hour. Just a double check for us to make sure that everything is the way that we specified or the way that we want. So those are the diff different types of reactors um, and their associated requirements. Um, you can always go in and specify more, make it more complicated, but again, you really want to start simple because you can always complicate it.